The 2002 EA Sports 500, one of the season's most anticipated races. Hendrick Motorsports is entering this race not only with a points lead, but with a ton of momentum. The past few races have been the best the team could ask for, but entering Talladega, they had a lot of optimism that was followed up by a huge flop. They were looking to beat one of the best teams in all of restrictor plate racing, but ended up beating themselves. In what should have been one of the greatest races in team history, it ended up being probably the worst. Actually, no, as a matter of fact, it was the worst. This is the worst Hendrick performance. What makes this one of the worst races is not only the end result, but the very beginning of the race. Right before the green flag ever dropped, chaos ensued. The whole ordeal took place during pace laps and involved two championship contenders, rookie Jimmy Johnson and veteran Mark Martin. Jimmy Johnson has been a model of consistency since entering the Cup Series in 2002. This will go down as one of the greatest rookie years in NASCAR history. Right from the jump, he was successful. A Daytona 500 pole, three wins up to this point, and is now a rookie leading the Winston Cup Series standings. Nobody could have predicted a season ago that Johnson would be a championship contender right from the jump. The only person who can beat him is either himself or someone's equipment. We talked about a lot of different uh, scenarios for sure. And, uh, well, we got some action going on before we ever get started here. But uh, it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. We think we know what we want to do if we can just make all of that happen. Yeah, we had a couple of guys get together coming down for the signal. One lap to go, DJ. Yeah, it looked like Mark was trying to warm up his tires and maybe got a little loose and came over into the 48. So uh, I don't know if there's any damage, but we'll have to see what happens. Left front down so far that the tire hit the fender there, Mark. Oh, uh, that wasn't it, buddy. in the Whoa. world. I have no idea. He, he's talking like the, the way he's talking to Ben Leslie is all of a sudden he just locked up. He was turning it left and it would not turn back to the right. He just locked up. Understandably so, crew chief Chuck announced was pleading his case to NASCAR to let him repair the car right before the race began. Even owner Rick Hendrick was over there begging them, but unfortunately NASCAR didn't oblige and the pole sitter of the race had to come down pit road on lap one for repairs. I think they were gonna let him probably repair the car before the race, but once Mark Martin came down pit road right before the green flag dropped, they were like, okay, it's too late. So out of the gate, right on lap one, Hendrick Motorsports is in the hole, but that's not to say it's entirely over. Johnson's able to repair the car, get back out there, but still remains multiple laps down. Meanwhile, his teammate slash car owner, Jeff Gordon, is showing a killer instinct. Jeff Gordon has won here a ton of times before, but in this context, a win here would be very important. To many fans, including his own, Jeff Gordon had fallen on hard times, which is very insane to me considering that entering this race, he was well inside the top five in points, but that just shows how good Gordon was during this era. Entering the 2002 season, he was coming off of his fourth championship, and this started the whole Drive for Five campaign, a campaign he would never accomplish, unfortunately, but still, a Hall of Fame career nonetheless. But in 2002, that took a bit of a detour. When I say a bit of a detour, I guess a bad season in Jeff Gordon's fans' eyes was three wins and a top five points place finish. Unless he was running for a championship in these days, everyone in the sport considered this an off year. Now back to the race. Gordon was dominant right from the jump. He started on the front row with his teammate Jimmy Johnson and even despite Johnson's trouble, Gordon was still able to lead on his own without any sort of help from any teammate. As they were running on lap 47, Gordon was only 11 points away from the points lead. Jimmy Johnson's lead had vanished. But what about the other two Hendrick cars in the field? Well, actually, there's four more. The MB2 Motorsports entries of Kenny Schrader and Johnny Benson are using Hendrick-powered engines. In this shot, you could see Kenny Schrader, Terry Labonte, Johnny Benson, and the 25 of Joe Nemechek. They are all Hendrick-powered. The Hendrick Motorsports engine department has upgraded this week to compete with the all high and mighty DEI on these restrictor plate tracks. For two seasons, DEI has completely dominated at both Daytona and Talladega. If you want to win here so badly, 
you have to beat the dynamic duo of Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Michael Waltrip. Upgrading the horsepower is great and all, but when your engines lack durability, that's a problem. In this race, it was a major problem because this was one of the only Talladega races to go caution free. And just that quickly, a solid day turned into the worst. Problems for Jeff Gordon as we come back live to Talladega. He crossed the start finish line last time in 13th place, but he has slowed on the back stretch, and now he's coming to pit road under green. Another twist in the championship picture today. And I see no smoke coming out from the car, so looks like it could be a flat tire. Dave? As soon as I finished my interview with Robbie Loomis, he said, get off the cart, please. Jeff's talking to me now. Jeff started reporting that something was wrong under the hood. He asked him down the down pit lane what the problem was. He said it's just in big, big trouble. Basically, the big, big trouble was the engine gave out. Even after leading all of those laps, competing with the DEI duo, Gordon was unfortunately out of the race, and he wasn't going to be the only one. Hendrick Motorsports engines had a major problem in this race in terms of durability. They probably didn't anticipate the race to go as long as it did. To be fair, who expects a Talladega race to go caution free in any sort of series? Exactly, nobody. But still, Hendrick has paid millions of dollars to figure this stuff out, and they probably should have anticipated it. Unfortunately, they didn't, and now are suffering the consequences. Now, if you thought that was bad, get ready, because it's about to get way worse. And Terry Labonte has just taken his car to the garage. That is a Hendrick Motorsports car. Matt, do I hear Jimmy Johnson's also struggling? Alan, the hits keep right on and coming for rookie Jimmy Johnson. Remember, he had that opening accident at the beginning of the race. Now, he reports to news crew chief Chad Canals. I'm down on seven cylinders, and it's getting worse. A bad day for the Hendrick engine department. Man, oh, man. Last week was so great at Kansas Speedway for all those guys at Hendrick and the engine department today has been so far a disaster. To call this just a disaster would be an understatement. This was an absolute catastrophe. The reason being, a total of six, that is right, six Hendrick engines failed that day. All six failed within the final 70 laps, making this by far the worst Hendrick performance ever in team history. In the end, Jimmy Johnson lost out on Rookie of the Year, Jeff Gordon finished fourth in the standings, and over the next two seasons, DEI would continue to dominate at the super speedways. Hendrick Motorsports would never be this terrible again. And once again, that'll do it for another video. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Black Flags Matter. Catch you next time.